Right then guys, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. Oh yeah baby! Today I'm going to be installing a couple of radiators at my mother-in-law's house, which means obviously it's all FOC, but she said look, I'll let you do the radiators if you film them. So I've been plied with a bit of coffee, a couple of bits of flapjack, and we're all ready to go. The radiators as well, by the way, have already been taken off by the decorator, so if you want to know how to take radiators off a wall, I've done a video on that already. We're going to be installing this beautiful radiator just here, and we're going to be putting it in this space here, which means we're going to have a little bit of higgledy-piggledy. I'm, I'm not going to be cutting out all this lot here, we're just going to be having to do above ground pipe work to this to make this all work out so it's going to be a bit of fun oh look she's in I know she's come back sorry, making sure I'm working sorry. I'm in the noise oh, isn't it you, you try and make a film about radiators and look what happens Sorry. Another little thing as well, these holes here have been polyfilled up, but they're going to be sanded down lovingly and then painted later on, which means I don't have to do it, which is a plus. So the other radiator we've got to do is just through here. By the way, you might remember Glenn, it's from when she had fans installed under her radiator. I did. Right? And they're very good, aren't they? Yeah, yeah very good. Very so good. Right, also she made some absolutely banging profit rolls on Sunday as well, which were quite nice. So we've got this little rad here. Now we've got to do a measure off for this. So usually we'd go central to the window just there, but for this one, we're going to go to the edge of the window for this radiator so I'll be able to show you how we do the measuring up for all that as well which I'm sure you'll find very interesting again we're trying to work with pipe work that's already here so what would you call it polishing a turn I believe it's known what we'll try and do is get it as nice as possible make it look beautiful make sure that everything can be drained down make sure that it all works okay and everything like that so first up I've got to go up in the loft don't laugh here's the entrance <laughs> oh my god man Look at the state of this. You guys probably can't see it, but the loft tank is down there, okay? And also, because this is a terrace cottage, and it's at the end of the terrace, you guys may have come across this before, but in older properties, you would find that they would have one stopcock for all four of the, well, there's four properties in this bit, one stopcock for all four. So if I go outside in the road and I turn the stopcock off just a few doors down, it will turn the water off in here, but it'll also turn the water off in three other properties. Now, I'm not a nutcase, and I'm not gonna be doing that and annoying people. It'd be very upsetting for them, would it not? Mm. There is another stopcock here, but it's under the kitchen plinth right at the back and it doesn't work. And to get to it, I would have to take everything out, cut everything out and put something in. I am tempted to put a shore stop in, in there, but I'll have to do that on another day. So today, what we're gonna do, what we have to do, because there's no pipes coming down that we can see, I don't know where they run. I think that it's probably in the wall somewhere, something like that, I don't know. But what we've got to do is tie up the ball valve in that loft tank. Yes. So what I've got to do this bit is a screw, piece of string, my brushless Bosch beast. Now it looks preliminary, look. There's actually an old bungee there and I think I put that there because I've been up here in the past. I've got to do the best bear crawl of my life to get through here without getting my t-shirt dirty. Got to get a screw in up there. Right, there you go, ball valve tied up. Let's just back out of this absolute hell hole. Fun, does it? I just enjoy that so much. Oh my god. Now no one wants leaks on a job. But I tell you what, if I turn the water back on later on and there's a leak, I'll we'll have to come back up here. I'll be most upset. Right, so now that we've got that done, it's a matter of getting a hose on to we've got two draining points here. So we've got a draining point down there on the radiator that we're working on. Um, and we've already got one down there as well for that one. Other radiators on the ground floor. Now this is something you might want to think about if you're draining down a heating system to do any kind of work. You want to think, hmm, is this radiator here, is that one going to drain down? Is this radiator going to drain down? No, it's not going to because it's on a drop down leg. So this radiator here, we won't need to worry about. We don't need to drain it out. The only things we need to do is drain out the uh, radiator in the bedroom upstairs, so we'll just vent it, and the radiator in another bedroom upstairs as well. And also while we're here, because this is my mother-in-law's house, I'd quite happily do this. Ah, 
Now then, sometimes with old ones of these, you need to pull the stopper out in here because it's stuck shut, but we'll soon see. I'm just nicking her hose. It sounds like we've got water coming out. Beautiful. And then a little towel just on here to get any of that up. Lovely, we're off. Let's have a look outside. Oh yeah, something to bathe under, beautiful. So on my van keys, I always have my radiator beast. So about all the clicking by the way guys, I'm not using my normal camera today. Uh, and this one's just a little one that I've taken out, I just thought I'd do a quickie beast. Oh, playing. of course it wants a slotty. Oh, DVB. That radiator wants a slotted screwdriver in it. Right, so what we got here? Oh, it's at the right end. There we go, that's sucking. And you can tell it's sucking just by putting your finger over the end. And obviously feel that lovely, almost incognito mode suction. <sighs> so this is it, right? When you're doing plumbing, a lot of your job is just moving about all the time, walking around, going from place to place, going up in lofts, knicker drawers. <laughs> this is leaked in the past, this red. I can tell you now. It's going to take decades to fill up. Right, now we're doing that. We don't want to waste time, do we? Because we're on this job. We've got lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. But our work up here is now done, pretty much. Thank the Lord. So now what we want to do is prepare our radiators. What is that fucking noise? Sounds like a broken bone, man. I'm not. <laughs> it's a dream catcher. So look, we've gone down to a trickle now. Lovely. Now what we need to do is prepare our two radiators for installation. So the first one I'm going to do is this one here in the living room. Um, I've already got it out of the box and then what I'm going to do with the box, I'm going to split it, lay the box down here and then that will turn into our work area for this job. So it's always a good tip to take the radiator out of its box, then cut the box open and use that as a nice area for you to work on. After that, I'm just going to pop on the radiator vents at the top and take out the bongs at the bottom and just get the beast ready to hang on the wall. Also, remember that all the tools that I use in this video, you can buy on our Amazon store. Links below. Right then, so we've got our ends in on here, which is sealed, they've just got a little rubber seal on those, just under there, nice and easy, there's our drain off in. Um, now, read the instructions, and we're gonna have a bit of a difficulty here, because because the radiator's already out already, I don't really know which side is the flow. Uh, and we have to put a bung in on these. Um, basically a diverting bung. Now the reason we do that is because with this sort of radiator if you had the water come in without a bung forcing the water to go up to here it would just shoot across the bottom and then out of the radiator again and you wouldn't get as much heat up the top of the radiator. So if I put the bung in this end and the water inlet turns out to be at this end what I'd usually do is get the radiator, flip it round and put it on the other way. We'll just see. I'll whack the bung in one of the ends and we'll see how it goes, alright? So the system's draining down. We might as well get things like our tails sorted out. So grab myself a little bit of the old Loctite. A little bit of Loctite, okay. We're doing the usual thing we do when we're getting radiators ready. Remember Loctite, one lot into the thread and then everything else just crossing over every so often. You don't need to put loads of this on, but then again, we don't want this to leak today, do we? We do want to be going in that loft more times than we have to. I mean, we don't leak anyway, let's face it, but. <laughs> oh, sometimes I just think, oh, I'd love a leak. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Sad operation, guys, really. We're just doing normal stuff here. Radiator up like that. Let's just pop the nut and all of just some of the wrap thing there. These look so exact. Worried about doing this up a bit too tight, actually. So I'm just going to be a bit careful with this. That's about as much as I want to do that up. Now what we need to do is measure up, get our brackets on, hang the radiator on. Now remember what I said, we are still draining out the system. So we're not, we're not wasting time here. And then we'll get onto the other radiator, which is the one you guys have come to see me install. But we're gonna do this one first. You get a bit of double whammy today. Lucky yows. So the number one, we've got these U-shaped clamps. I'm gonna have it the other way around, but 
can work quite easily like this. And this is what we're going to be working for, for our widths, okay? So the centre of this one here, to the centre of this one here, that's when we work on. Five, five, five. 555 pounds. I'm going to write that just on there, all right? Now when it comes to differences in height, you can do it in two ways really. You can actually put them on and try and measure the difference, or you can say the difference is always going to be defined by what this sits into. Therefore, we can measure the bottom of this little pipe, this, we can measure the bottom of this bit here to the bottom of this bit there, and we'll know then what the difference is. Pull out your tape measure now, pop that on there, and then measure from the bottom of this, and look at that, five, six, four. So we know exactly what our widths are now, where we want to go. We might need the radiator in a sec just to get our heights right, but I think what we really want to do is try and get the radiator just so it's about, I don't know, an inch below this here. Now remember what I said as well, we're working off the side of this here. That's our, our marker for the, where this radiator comes up to. So usually what I'll do is go from the bottom, but today what we'll do, we'll come from the top. So if I want to go to the bottom of this, that's what we'll work off, okay? So then we've, we've got a flat then that we know exactly where we are. 85mm to the bottom. So now we've got all our measurements that we need to get this exactly right and where we want it. So 85mm, we know that it's also going to be nice and out of sight our 85mm. We're going to come down just about here. So we know our width of our rad, we know exactly where our widths want to be. So our width of our radiator is 800 That comes up to there. So now we've got our centre. 555 divided by 2, 277.5. We'll have to see what we do with the Put our line there for that. Mark. Good thing is they've got some nice big old holes on this actually, which is good. Right, we know the distance already is 564. This is going to be a real tetchy install, this is. We've got so many little things restricting where this radiator is going to go. Jeez. The wall is pretty wee weed as well, but there we go. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill using my little 5mm bit for this pit, just because, uh, and I'm going to drill in the centre of this, just because I want to drill a small bit just to see what the wall's like, because it's quite an old cottage. Right, so we've got this bit cut back now to where we want it to be. So now we've got to do a little bit of worky works so this can be popped on okay. So the first thing I'll probably do is just try and get this paint off. That's number one. Now sometimes you'll find you can get the paint off just like this with a little little one of these. But sometimes you'll find that that doesn't happen just like now and that's kind of typical. Don't waste water if you can help it. Use your soldering rag to get wet. Looks like so. Basically at this point it's going to be heat, scrubbing it off with the end of your slotted screwdriver. If you've got some emery cloth, use some emery cloth. That stuff's absolutely brilliant. You'll find that in the shop. That's in my soldering bag section. Um, and also a bit of wire will always help as well. But just get the end of that as if it was absolutely brand new copper. Fortunately, I had some bends left over from the bending video last week. If you ever do any bends that are the wrong size or something like that on another job, don't chuck them away. Just leave them in the back of the van. They're always going to come in handy for little jobs like this and could save you a little bit of time. So what I'd usually do is build up the whole fitting like this so I know that it looks beautiful. And then I'll take it all apart jointing compound all my olives and also flux all my soldering fittings and then put it back together for a lovely bit of soldering. <laughs> done that end there, that's all done. Just done this end there which is a tiny little set, uh, straight solder and an elbow on there. Unfortunately I have to drop down a little bit purely because of obviously the height we've got here 
is making that quite difficult to do. But this is what you've come in to see, I imagine. You've seen us fit loads of radiators in the past, long time fans of this channel. Um, but today, we're gonna be doing this beast here. Slightly unusual, slightly strange. These are bits have been filled in. I'm probably just gonna shave them off now for my mother-in-law. I've got to do a good job here. I mean, I do a good job everywhere I go, but if I get this one wrong, what will happen? Hey, I will be ostracized from family. <sighs> so what we're gonna do first, is we are going to find our centre for this and we're going to do all our marks a little bit lower down just because I want to hide them a bit. So that's 6934. So we're going to get that first. Now from my centre, the good thing about these are is when it comes to heights, you're just kind of there already really. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to marry up my centre. We're already there, already. Honestly, do not know what these walls are going to be like, but I do hope that they are kind to me. <laughs> now the next thing I want to do is just make sure that my in-out is level. So look, this shows how out this wall is as well. Man, this is so out. Pop it down here. Right, they're level now. Which actually means that my top holes just need to be redone a bit. But now we know where this bit is, this is going to be so annoying to mark. Right, so we'll just pop this off now, out of the way. Let's get these properly marked. So we've got a cross on there. So we're just getting these holes marked here, because we know that this is level, has to be. And we've got this level already using our spirit level across this pipe and this pipe. So now we've just got these holes marked here. We should be able to lift this off. And look, I've already done my crosses for the main holes there. Just got to do them on here. Now we're ready to drill all of our holes. Just so you know, on this one it's got a slow start up, so that's EPC 70. So when I touch the control on here, look, listen. So it's running at like a lower speed. Now for the these walls, that's really good because the walls are a bit iffy. The floor, obviously, I'm not going to be doing in hammer because they're porcelain tile floor. So, just so you know, I've got to do six holes for them as well, it's not going to be fun. We'll see how it goes. Yes, the wall is going in very nicely, but in a minute you're going to see me drill a tiled floor without tile bits. I'm going to do the old school way of doing it with a masonry bit, not on hammer. I've got to say, actually, it went through really quite easily and just a little cup there of water to keep the drill bit nice and cool. And that's just the way you can do it sometimes if you don't want to use a tile bit. Quickly got everything cleared up, whacked my plugs in and then got these screwed in. I did them a little bit with the impact driver and then actually finished them off with a hand screwdriver because they were really, really quite tetchy. I didn't want to rip the heads up. Right, so there we go, we've got these screwed in now, and look, it is absolutely fixed to the wall like a mofo. This is where this problem, that we're going to get to a point in the video where you lot are like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Well, the thing is, right, I've got to kind of work with this, because I can't be cutting this out and doing loads of stuff. Normally what we'd have is we'd have a pipe coming up out the floor, first fixed properly, and going into our valve, just like so. Beautiful, nice and easy. We can't do that with this, with this radiator, because obviously the pipes are coming out where they are. So, we've got to make a bit of a decision. So it's not gonna look great, but most of the time this will be covered in towel. But we are gonna probably maybe do an elbow down into this one. So yet again, using Loctite to get my spigots done up. The good thing about Loctite that I really like is it, it will spew out what it doesn't need, but also it just locks the thread in nicely so it doesn't keep spinning about. And that's what I'm using there. Also, you can see I'm using my lovely Rothenberger radiator tail ratchet. You can get that in the shop as well. That's always in my hand tools box, that beast. Really, really nice. And just getting all the valves ready to go on. Probably going to be some water coming out of here, just so you know. Which would be annoying. And yeah, of course there is. Ah. Right, so we've got this pipe here. This pipe has got water in it, okay? Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Basically, you get a rubber hose, you blow down the pipe, you've already got all your pipe work made up, ready to solder, you get in there and you solder that as quickly as possible. That's the trick. Now, I like to show you loads of different methods of doing things, and normally, we'd use a wet vac to wet vac this bit out, but this is another little trick, and you'll see there's a little blob of solder here. I actually tried to burn this bit, bit of solder off after we'd done this, and that showed how quickly the water came back, but we still got a watertight seal. 
as you can see, I got a solder blobette on there, a little bit of snot. Uh, just heated that up after a few minutes and just flicked that off to make it good. So I just wanted to show you that little way of doing it there. If you're ever stuck up the creek without a paddle, that's how you do it. Right, okay. It's not beautiful, but it's better than chasing up a tile floor and not being able to find the tiles and all that sort of stuff. That one's looking a little bit sexier. Very nice. Uh, what we're going to do now is we've got all our drain offs shut off. I'm just going to shut the, the leads on the radiators and then it's back up into that loft. Take the bungee off and then we just cross our fingers and hope because there's probably two plate, three places maybe where we might get a leak. Uh, it doesn't matter how good a plumber you are, you clean those pipes. When you're going from new to old, that is the place you get leaks. Uh, especially on that real quick solder I did with the uh, blowing the water away. That's an old school trick that is. Um, so look, I'm going to go up here now and get that back on. I don't think you need to see that, do you? I just don't want to watch the footage of this ever again. It brings back nightmares. <laughs> it's quite slow filling, so it's going to be about five or ten minutes before we start getting any pressure in the radiators to vent out. But what I'll probably do first, just to make sure we are getting a good flow through, is just open up this drain cock here. It's already dripping, which means that we're definitely getting water through, but we've actually now got a leak on that. Here you go, and now you're going to watch me snatch the drain cock as well, live. All fun and joy, and all something that you should think, oh, when the plumber came round and did the radiators, he did so much more, and it was so, so much grief. It's like, yeah, this is the reason why most people don't become plumbers, because it can be a right bum hole. I mean, think of the loft and everything else. Yeah. Prepare yourself for drain cock bleeding out noises, war film style. Boom! Right then, so we're all done. This is actually getting lovely and warm now and I haven't got my Bosch thermal camera here to prove it, which is a bit annoying. These are probably the easiest radiators to actually hang because there's no real hanging. Uh, everything is defined by, well, it being level one way and the floor being level and the wall being level another. So they're very, very easy to fit. I know that the pipe work here isn't like, well, perfect, but unfortunately I wasn't here when this floor was put down. That was probably done about 20, 20 years ago. Um, but it's been nice to come and do it and show you sort of the process of it going along. I realise that a lot of you probably thought, well, I haven't really learnt a load on this video, but, you know, maybe you have. Maybe you picked something up from it along the way, like that little trick there on how to blow water away from where you're soldering and quickly solder it up before it all comes back again. Little tricks like that get you out of the poo when you don't have a Charles Hoover or a Bosch wet bag. Um, so yeah, there we go, all done. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. It's been emotional. Hopefully you can hear some music wafting in now from the AL Army Massive. Um, I'm gonna clear all my tools up. Remember the tools that I use in this video you can get on our Amazon store, so click on that below. And I'll see you in next week's video. Remember, it's a whole tag. See you this soon, I love you. And it's snowing outside, and yesterday I got sunburned. I mean, what is going on with the world? Ah.